the most sophisticated, powerful, and intricately designed aircraft or fighter jets. It makes sense that they would also be the most expensive. What choices would you have if you had to purchase one? This price only includes the cost of the aircraft itself, excluding the price of any development or maintenance programs or other expensive extras. A jet's ticket price is also subject to negotiation and is never set in stone. Others are able to establish full or partial manufacture of the desired jet in their country. Many nations also purchase domestically produced jets at prices significantly lower than their export price. When possible, this list uses the pure export price, but it shouldn't be taken as the final word. Are the individual airplanes really worth hundreds of millions of dollars? This may cost as much as twice as much as the F-35 and even more than the $122 million per F-22 price tag. According to rumors, the Air Force has already launched a technology demonstrator for the NGAD. The platform is breaking records, according to the heads of the service branch acquisition. But on Capitol Hill excessive spending is still a problem. The drones are force multipliers. The F-22 was an expensive aircraft, so this one will likely cost more. It is also a very powerful aircraft, and it was one of mine in one of my earlier roles. Drones will aid in GAD pilots in gaining a better understanding of their environment and provide target, intelligence, and surveillance data that can be shared with command and control and next-generation fighter aircraft. The F-20 is the name of the U.S. Navy's own NGAD program, and they are also not as forthcoming with budgetary line items for cost. Fifth-generation fighters are so advanced and so expensive that just three nations have designed and built models the United States, Russia, and China. The technology stealth, supercruise, supermaneuverability, interconnectivity is still cutting edge. Yet, the great powers are already looking ahead, as great powers tend to do, competing with each other and contemplating the sixth generation of fighter technology. Sixth generation fighters exist only in concept. Several countries are working on sixth generation fighters some of which have never even created a fifth generation fighter including the US, Russia, China, Japan, the UK, and France. Although the sixth generation of aircraft is still nascent, a set of distinct features have congealed to form the basis of what a sixth generation fighter Namely, all of the fifth-generation worthy abilities for survivability in contested environments, air superiority, ground attack, etc. will need to be improved commensurate with the times. The emphasis on close combat dogfighting, which dominated 20th century aerial warfare, is becoming a peripheral concern of aircraft manufacturers. Instead, ground attacks, cyber warfare, and even space warfare are increasingly relevant. Beyond visual range missile combat is also still important. The next generation of jet fighters will likely incorporate the ability to operate in a manned or unmanned configuration. And like the F-35 and the fifth generation of air fighters, sixth generation fighters will need to integrate with a variety of other jets, drones, soldiers, and sensors in a saturated network meant to provide warfighters with a comprehensive picture of the battle space. The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, the world's first operational fifth generation fighter, was first fielded by the United States in 2005. The F-22 stands out when compared to the fourth-generation aircraft that came before it. But why was it the first of a new generation rather than a more modern take on the fighters of the previous generation? Generative names frequently originate from the aviation industry. Each generation has a somewhat arbitrary list of capabilities that may have been present in some specific aircraft in the past but are now expected to be present in all fighters of the following generation. It is possibly the murkiest fighter generation because new fourth-generation fighters are still being produced. Fourth-generation fighters are consequently frequently subdivided into generations such as 4, 4 Plus, and 4 Plus Plus. These more sophisticated fourth-generation platforms frequently feature some, but not all, fifth-generation capabilities. The F-22 Raptor, the first fighter of the fifth generation, stood out from its fourth-generation counterparts most significantly by incorporating stealth into every aspect of its construction. The F-22's development prioritized stealth from the beginning rather than first designing a fighter for aerodynamics and performance and then looking for ways to reduce its radar signature. Of course, that wasn't the only thing that made the F-22 unique. In addition to being the world's first true stealth fighter, it also had a number of other crucial fifth-generation characteristics. Highly integrated computer systems that could connect to other networked assets were standard equipment on the F-22. It is a high-performing airframe with the capacity to perform multiple roles. As a result, it keeps a better grasp on the current situation than older platforms, supercruising capabilities, or the ability to maintain supersonic speeds without using an afterburner, were another feature that the F-22 brought with it. 
The ability to supercruise is crucial for an interceptor fighter like the F-22 because it allows them to approach enemy aircraft at extremely high speeds while still conserving fuel for the actual combat.